Hello and welcome, this is Ruth and today I'm going to share with you kit number 77 from Tonic Studios. It's always very exciting when one of these boxes arrive. So launch day as always is the 20th of the month and then the kit will be sent out to you on the first of the following month or the closest uh, day that they can be posted on. So not at the weekends obviously. But let's open this up and have a little look inside. This is called Hello Friend. So there's a little flyer in here and it shows you what you can do with the kit here and what should be inside it and I'm loving those colours already. So let's just have a quick look and see what all is in here. First of all there's this beautiful bag with all sorts of goodies in it. You'll find a little wallet with the dies and the stamps and then we've got the A4 folder that has lots of different colours of paper and card in. So I'm just going to move the box over and we'll have a closer look at this. Now don't forget I've got lots and lots of these kits already made into video form and you'll be able to see all of those on my uh, kit playlist, Tonic Studios kit playlist. But if you'd like to subscribe now to my channel and hit the notification bell, then you won't miss any of them as they come up. And sometimes, but only if I do get time, I do come back and make little follow up videos and little things with the kit as well. So if you've enjoyed it at the end, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and leave me a little comment. But in the meantime, I'll just get on to this after, of course, I've reminded you that my affiliate links for all of this will be down below in the, com in the description of the video too. Well, you can see from this that it's got beautiful lilacs, violets and all sorts of beautiful purple tones and lovely stamps and dyes here that are very floral and really just up my street. I absolutely love that kind of thing. So I'm going to open up the colours first and let you see what's in here from this wallet. And that wallet is always very, very handy because while I'm cutting out the bits and pieces that I need, I put the rest back in there and pop them into my uh, kit box and keep them safe. And then I can come back and check uh, what else I need. But bear in mind too that although you've got one sheet of everything here, apart from this one, which you've got two, that Tonic do have all of these in, in stock on their website. Uh, they're all craft perfect. Everything... Uh, paper wise is called Craft Perfect from Tonic. So this is Craft Perfect 300 GSM Smooth Card and up to here is Craft Perfect Classic Card and then Craft Perfect uh, Pearlized Card. So I'm going to call you out the names, let you know what's here and then we'll just get on to the next bit. So there are two sheets of A4 Smooth Card that's 300 GSM. Really, really sturdy, good quality and that's fantastic for making your card blanks and all sorts of things like that. Then we've got the classic card and that is mauve purple, aubergine purple, arctic blue, cornflower blue, french blue and amber yellow. And then we have two pearlescent cards, gleaming lilac and uh, ivory sheen. And those look really really beautiful together and don't forget that you can use all sorts of pattern papers and things with them as well. But those make a really, really good base to start with. Now, the dies are really, really important. So I've already taken the little uh, cover bags off them and we'll have a little look. But there's the sticker saying, hello friend. And I'm just going to pop that on the front of my little folder and then I'll be able to find that one when I'm looking for it. So there we are. Now, that's a handy little thing to fit into the little wallets. Sorry, that's a kind of a wallet and then it goes into a little folder that you can keep three in. And those are supplied every three months, the other ones, and you can slip this in there. So hold on to that and put it in there if, you, if that's how you like to store yours. Right, here are the dies and I think I'll just get out a piece of the white card that I had there to show you the dies on top of this because it'll probably show it off a bit better. Oh, they do look lovely. I absolutely love florals and things like that so we've got two really beautiful florals here and I think you should be able to see that on the front that looks like this one now there's no cutting edge in that so that one means that you can put that into the card and that will cut that pattern through your card and leave it there but if you want to cut it out as a panel you can use one of these edges here so the straight rectangle or the little uh, one with the, the I think that's just got a little uh, dashed line around it so they're actually two rectangles uh, I thought this one was scalloped at first, but there you are. It's really, really beautiful. Then we have, uh, right, we've got this one, which looks like this. 
and that is very very pretty now i'm not too sure i think i've got these but anyway once we cut them out we're going to see how beautiful they look anyhow but would you look at that stamp the stamp's got little shading bits and everything already in it so you don't even need to worry about all your shading although obviously if you do add that in it's going to look gorgeous but isn't that really really pretty there right back to this again do i have a little look we've got the plain rectangle the dashed line rectangle both of these can be cut into your card these can be used separately so no problem whatsoever in creating uh, panels little trifold cards bookmarks gift tags anything with these and two fantastic little layering ovals so a scalloped one and a smaller plain oval and two tags one with a straight edge at one end and one with the little uh, pointed end at both ends but obviously you could cut one end off if that's the kind of effect you want and then we've got a little sort of uh, distressed shape of a panel another three little scalloped ones here and then some wording so we've got sorry hello and friend and then the outlines for these ones as well here here and here that is really really beautiful now we'll have a little look at the stamps too as i said that one has lots and lots you can see it there the shading already in there so that makes that much easier for you to follow along with then we've got a stamped banner so uh, i'm guessing that stamps out in black or whatever color you use because it looks solid it's not just an outline it's a solid one and then you can add a, a embossed maybe sentiment onto the top of that and that would be really really pretty so we've got hello i'm true forever thank you grateful for you i think we're thinking of you and you are amazing and best so we've got all of those that can be put together in different combinations now let's have a look at what's inside this bag oh lovely beautiful colors as well so first of all we can see we've got glimmer paste here and a spatula so this little spatula can be used to apply the glimmer paste and the glimmer paste is absolutely beautiful uh, for making backgrounds just spreading this on but it's gorgeous through stencils really really beautiful and those both go together there's also dream drops and those are indigo eclipse now i'm going to be showing you these in use uh, further on through the video so you will see those i'm not just showing them to you now and then we'll forget about them we will come back to those but the alcohol markers i think you probably already know that i absolutely love alcohol markers so I'm always using these and I think I think you liked the sort of freehand thing that I did in the last video where I sort of painted with the watercolours, uh, watercolour pencils and the brush. And I might just give you some really loose and easy ideas with these two. So hang in there and don't miss that. So we've got Natural Patina, Pillow Mint, Blackcurrant Tart, Spring Lilac, Violet Breeze and Sugar Plum. Oh, even those names are lovely. Right, I'm going to go and die cut and I'll be straight back with lots of ideas and I hope you enjoy them. I thought I'd make a pretty straightforward little trifold card this time. And I took my A4 piece of card and obviously this is 21 centimetres across this way. So I cut it down 14 centimetres and right across here. And then I scored it at 7 centimetres across the 21 centimetre part at the top and made myself a beautiful little trifold card which opens and closes just like that and i always like to keep the folded edge in here and the other uh, sort of cut edge here but i suppose you could have it the other way around if you like but that's the way i prefer it then i took this little die here so that's the plain rectangle one and i cut that three times in the aubergine purple one for each um, panel of the card and i can glue those on in a moment or two but there they are and that is a really really lovely colour then i took the pearlescent card and i have cut that out cut the beautiful two floral patterns from that so there's quite a lot of detail in those pattern dies and normally i would just put two dies together through the die cutting machine i would tape them down really really carefully but because there's so much detail in that it actually was much easier this time and it'll save you time too if you cut out the rectangle first then come back when you've got the rectangle there and just pop this die on top of it and run it through the die cutting machine taped it well down of course and then obviously the pearlescent card looks really really beautiful and i have it here in the two different patterns 
So I'm going to glue one on here for the front and then another one on here for the third panel. And for the one in the centre then, I'm just going to glue it on there and I'll come back and show you the detail in that. But for now, I'm really, really glad to see that Tonic have got these little precision nozzles back in because uh, I always love using those on detailed dies like this. But um, they were out of stock and I have not a clue where mine went. I had a couple of them. I'd been using them and then I took off to put um, on a new bottle of glue. And of course I had a big tidy up in my craft room and they went walkies and I never found them again. So I've now got myself some extras, some spares and I'm happy. So the little nozzle then just applies the glue on all the little tiny bits that you want it in. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one and the other one and glue these two panels in place. those panels in place I want to put a little sentiment in the centre and I want this to be my sorry card so I've cut this one out in white and just while that was in the die there while the die cut was still in it I went around the edges there and just felt them with my little stylus my little embossing tool and then that embossed those edges really well and that looks really really lovely now I'm going to put that in the centre here but before I do that I want to put sorry on it now, if this wasn't a trifold card, I think I'd really be embossing that or, you know, setting it up just in a little 3D foam pad or something to give it a little bit of dimension. But I'm just going to leave it like that. I might actually just put it a little higher uh, than the centre, but right across there. Then I've taken this little die that says sorry, and that actually cuts out the letters like this. And you've got the letters and then the little piece for the middle of the O. But if you use that and that one together, like that, tape them both down together, you'll not only get those letters, but you'll get this little piece as well. You can see that there. Now I'm going to glue that on there, and then I'm just going to use my fine nozzle again, my tweezers and a little bit from the centre of the O and pop it in there. Before I glue that down, I'm just going to put glue along the top of it here because I've also taken the little tag die uh, the little banner one and I'm going to cut that in two um, that's this so I've cut th this one with the two little tails out and I'm actually just going to cut that in two like that just held this down in place with my thumb and then flicked the ends of these up just a little and that doesn't um, really affect this when it's closed over but it gives just a little bit of dimension there which is really really nice on the flat part of the card and I think that's really lovely it's very very simple now I'm quite tempted to go back in with some of these but I think I'm just going to leave that card flat like that and that's it and then we'll move on to the next one I couldn't really wait to use the stamp so I've cut myself a top fold long card so this is 28 centimeters this way and uh, seven across here and I folded that in half so we've now got a card a top fold card which is seven centimeters by 14 and I'm just going to stamp this onto a piece of seven by 14 white card and I'll probably trim that after in fact, I'll probably use one of the little dies for it. But I'm going to pop this into my stamping platform, just like so. And pop this on here. Now, I probably should have used a bigger piece of uh, paper or card to put this on, first of all, and then trimmed it down. But um, that's what I've done, and I'm sure it'll work. 
So let's just get started. see not only by the shades of these but if you look at the colors uh, here the violet breeze and then the black currant tart it starts at 432 this is 437 439 and 431 so they get deeper in shade as you get as the number gets bigger and also I'm sure all of you know this but this uh, little dark edge around here shows you where the fine tip is and then the bullet tip is at the other end and the same thing applies to these two as well. So the darker one is the 361 and that's the natural patina and we've got the pillow mint. So I'm going to start off with some um, darker in the centre and then lighter towards the outside of the petals. And you can use whichever of these shades you like, but I'm just going to start off with Violet Breeze. If you look closely you'll see those colours look just a little bit disjointed, they look just as if they're one layer and then the other. So I go back to the first colour, the very lightest one, and go over the whole lot together and that blends all of those colours together and then they look as if they're all sort of just one blending and flowing into the other. Now I'm just going to continue right across all the rest of the flowers with that and then I'm going to use these two colours for the foliage. There you are. Now that's it coloured and honestly and truthfully that is really really easy to do. I'm sure if you haven't done it before just start off with a lighter colour, add some dark and then uh, I mean from the outside in. If you're working from the inside out I'd start with the darker colour and add the lighter colours at the edge but go over the whole thing together with the lightest colour that you've used and that will blend it all together and it looks beautiful but that stamp is fairly foolproof because it's already got a lot of the shading there. And those colours are absolutely gorgeous on it. So now I'm going to take a little die and I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just cut it with that one. No, I'm going to actually use the the um, one with the little dashed edge. I'm going to cut that off and then add that onto the front of my card. That's gorgeous with that little pin uh, sort of dashed edge or whatever it is around the outside. And it looks really, really lovely straight onto the white. But I've cut a piece of, of the aubergine purple card. And that measures 13 and 3 quarters by 6 and a half centimetres. And I'm going to glue that on there. And that just makes it stand out so much more. It's really, really beautiful. Now just to finish this one off, I've cut the little background of the hello out in white because that makes it stand out really really well and then I've cut the hello itself out in the aubergine purple 
which is the same colour as this and it brings that all in. And when I've got that glued on, in fact I'm actually going to add that on 3D foam pads so I just lift them out now and remind myself. And then I'm going to add some of these Indigo Eclipse Dream Drops just around some of these areas here and that will be beautiful. After making the two cards I thought I'd make a lovely little bookmark so I have just cut out a piece of the aubergine purple card that's slightly bigger than the uh, outside die of this so it's that's the dotted, dotted edged one and I've cut it out in white this time with this beautiful pattern out of the centre and first of all I'm going to glue this on here and then I'm going to cut this out again and uh, paper piece some of the pieces in so I'll just speed it up and you can watch me do that because it's quite simple, but it's lovely to do. Now I've taken a piece of white card exactly the same size as this one and I'm going to glue that onto the back to strengthen that and also to cover up where I have sort of pushed in with my little uh, bone folder and it has left little marks but I always intended to put this on anyway just to keep it nice and rigid and firm for the bookmark but I've taken the two little oval dies from the pack here and I've cut the darker one out with the scallop and the lighter one with the amethyst sorry with the Oh, I've forgotten the name, but the pearlized card <laughs> and I've put one on top of the other and I am just going to pop that on there. This is going to be the top of my bookmark. So I'm just going to sandwich it in between these two before I glue those together. I've kept that nice and flat so that it's a bookmark but it could actually be a little gift tag and you could punch a hole in the top and put a little bit of ribbon from that. Um, I might even go ahead and do that bit of twine or a bit of ribbon or something just through there. Actually Tonics Craft Perfect Aubergine Purple Ribbon was absolutely perfect for that. So that's the 5, the five metre by 3 millimetres and it looks really really lovely up there too. Now I've got an A6 card and I've taken a little panel of the beautiful blue card to go on top of that. That's the cornflower blue and I've placed this little die in and just sort of left a fairly equal distance along these three sides here and I have taken that piece out and what I really want to do is cut this decorative panel through the card itself and I didn't want it just through the blue card so I can go ahead now just holding this one in place. I haven't even glued it down yet but I do, do need to make sure I've got it in the right place so that it's all evenly centred. And then put this die in here and hold that in place. I can then remove this one, this panel, and hold this one down with some masking, sorry, some die tape. And then I can die cut that. So just before I do die cut it, I have to remember to open the card out and then run it through here. And I really only need to, to die cut to there, back and, back and forwards, possibly a, a couple of times, uh, because this is quite detailed. And then after that, I'll have that beautiful panel cut through to white and I can glue this on top. 
Well, it's got really, really beautiful fine detail cut through it now. And I'm going to put this on here. But wouldn't that be really, really gorgeous with um, maybe vellum or something behind it? It would be really, really beautiful in so many different ways because it's a gorgeous pattern. But I may put a little panel in behind it and just show it off in two different ways because that's also beautiful. I'll think about that while I'm gluing this together. thought that arctic blue looked really nice so I've gone for a piece of card which is uh, 12 centimeters by fifth just under 15 and a half and I've scored it here at one centimeter and I'm going to glue that one centimeter onto the inside of that and then well if you've seen my cards before I'm very partial to this kind of idea where you have that sort of aperture backed but it's not solid so um, I'm going to do that again because I really really like it I'm just going to pop that on there, fold this over, and there you have it. So it means that it's still nice and light and airy and open, but there actually is some backing, and then it means that also you can come back in here and you can write whatever you want on the inside of the card too. And I, I really, really like that. I've probably done that quite a few times, but anyhow. Now I've cut out the long banner, the one that has the straight edge and the little pointed edge. And I've cut that out twice in blue, in the Arctic blue as well, because I want to bring that together with it. And I'm going to pop those on here. So uh, I want this little banner part down at the bottom and the other part uh, facing the top. I've made this little sentiment in exactly the same way as I made the sorry one except this one says friend and I've added the little pieces in here and here so when you die cut them that means you'll still have those little letters that you can use in something else but take out the little centre pieces if you want and uh, you can go ahead then and use those for something else afterwards but the centre pieces fit in nice and neatly into here. I've added some 3D foam pads but as you can see they're only over at one side here and I'm going to pop that right on over there that way you don't see that this doesn't join in the middle and that looks really nice there. Now, although I don't have any sort of lilacs and whatnot on that, I've kept this one strictly to blue. I am going to add some of these Indigo Eclipse Dream Drops because uh, they're kind of iridescent and then they blend in with everything. So I'm going to add a few up around here and then some here. got a panel of card here and I'm just going to add some of this uh, glimmer paste across it and some of the dream drops as well to make a nice background so I really just want to go this way and that way I don't really want to create much of a pattern you can see I've left the depths of that and the thicknesses of that and um, quite different so I've got some thicker parts and some thinner parts and that's going to be really nice whenever it dries but I'm going to add some dream drops onto that as well now I'm not usually a fan of just sort of random stuff like this but I actually th think this is really nice together I was thinking of making a stencil and putting this through it a stencil with the uh, dies from this set but I think they might actually just be a little bit too detailed and then um, it would be a little bit messy at the end. I could be wrong and maybe some of the other design team do that and it look really, really beautiful. But um, I don't think it's something that I would try with detailed dyes just like that one. I'm just going to dab this a little bit and that will give some iridescence to parts of that but not all of it. And now I'm going to dry that with my heat gun. I 
dried that with my heat gun there as you saw and then I left it for a little while because it does actually take quite a wee while to dry whenever it's sort of thick in places like that. If I was just to use a thin layer of that it wouldn't take too long but I've got two layers of things on and as you can see there it's beautiful. It's got that lovely gritty texture and the sparkle and it's also got the dream drops on as well. So I actually die cut that with a little pinhole. It's not actually a pinhole, I keep calling it that, but it's a little uh, dashed or stitched line there. And I've then cut this panel out again with that same line. And I'm going to glue that on top. And you can see that beautiful shine and um, texture all coming through there. And then I'll go ahead and make a little card with that. cut two panels then with the same little stitched edge and I've done that in the arctic blue and I've just cut a little bit of uh, the lilac the mauve purple card actually and glued this on top of it and then I've got some 3d foam pads on top of that so I want to add this up on top just to give it a little bit of height and um, then I'm going to add some little bits and pieces of banner on top of that so I've cut out three of those and I'm going to cut those in half and attach them so this will just go on there that should be about halfway across in the centre of the card and here we are these little ones here and I'm just going to cut the three of those in half and add some in there so earlier on I mentioned about uh, popping things up in 3d foam pads and then you were able to put some slip some things in behind afterwards this is a classic example of that because um, there's a little bit of height in there and that means that I can go ahead and just pop those in just wherever I want. I might have to shorten them a little bit obviously because of the 3D foam pads but they will just slip in behind. And then I'm going to add some dream drops after that. seem to have got a bit carried away with this set already but uh, one last thing and I do hope you enjoy this I know you enjoyed some freehand stuff with the watercolour pencils before so we're going to try some really really basic freehand drawing with these alcohol markers and obviously this could look a lot lot different if you added other colours in but I'm just going to stick to the ones that are in the kit at the moment and I've got them laid out in order so the lightest to the darkest and the same here as well and I have got myself a little piece of card. I'm going to put this onto the front of a card blank whenever I finish. And I have just drawn with a pencil around a little heart die. You could do a circle, you could do an oval, you could do anything, just freehand even. I thought I wouldn't be as messy as usual by just doing a, a round a die cut because you're watching and I have to keep it neat. <laughs> so this is really, really simple, really, really easy and just enjoy. So first of all, I'm going to take my uh, Violet Breeze, so that's the, the lightest colour, and I'm going to do a little uh, heart, a little flower up at the top of the heart. Now I just want to uh, take out that piece there because I don't really want that showing. So a little heart first of all, just one heart, another heart. Now these don't have to be perfect as you can see. Another one, and another one. That is a basic little flower at the top of my little wreath and I'm going to colour those in with the same marker that I drew them with. And I'm just going to take the next one which is the spring lilac and I'm going to add a little bit of shading up here. See just with that little V part of the top of the heart just there. Now as I say this could not be easier. Some in there. And then we're just going to go back to the pen that we started off with and do that again and blend those colours together. Now I am going to go back to the darkest one here, which is the black currant tart, and do some dots in the centre of that. 
and that's it you can add more shading if you want you could go back in again with the second one that you've used spring lilac and just whenever that dries add a little bit more in there just whatever shading you like and again if you want to bring it all together just like that with the lightest one over the top so now we've got that little flower i'm going to do some leaves around here and then i'm going to add some more little tiny tiny roses around here and just enjoy just follow along and watch and hope that you will try this too so this is pillow mint and this is natural patina Now up here I'm going to put some tiny tiny roses so all this this really really is simple stuff so it's really just some little circles maybe make those a, wee, a little bit bigger so that was my violet breeze and now I'm going back to the spring lilac and all I'm going to do is do a little dot in the middle and then a wide spiral around the outside. Now I'm going to do some darker flowers in between here so I've got this this one and I'm just going to do some little dotty kind of flowers and now I'm just going to fill in some little bits of this one And then we'll just do some more little uh, leaves and some little flowers right down to the end there and I'm going to add some more pieces in here but basically this is so simple you could just enjoy yourself I might add just a little bit of darker up here but I'm definitely just going to rub out all of the little uh, pencil lines here and I'm really really pleased with that I really really hope you try that just add some extra little details dots squiggly bits whatever shape of flowers you like 
round ones if you want to make those petals just a little bit more irregular go on ahead and do that as well in fact that's quite nice so I'm just going to add some squiggles onto the sides this is just to be enjoyed so really really just go for it and enjoy it please do <laughs> and let, let me know if you have tried this and if you enjoy it I think you're going to love that if you haven't done it before I have some dream drops here now and I'm just going to add some detail in at the top um, and fill some of those areas in and then I'm going to take one of the die cuts uh, from the kit and add it in here and put that onto a card added quite a lot of drops onto that so hopefully you can see that they look really really lovely and I'm just going to set that aside until it dries and then I'll come back and add a sentiment into the centre and make the card out of it what do you think do you like that please do let me know if that's something that you would try it's so so easy but don't forget too that you've got loads and loads of other colours and alcohol markers that could all be added into that and make a totally different look to it in fact you could even die cut that out uh, if you had made it on a bigger piece of card, you could die cut the heart out and send it out, set it on or whatever. Just whatever you like, but just enjoy it. Well, I finished the little card and I think it turned out really, really pretty. And I hope you really like that. So what I did was cut the card blank down that I was going to use. And I've cut this white piece down as well and made a little square card. And then I mounted the hello with white onto the, the mauve purple just to um, match in with the background here. And then I've cut a little butterfly from an older set, just a tiny little one with the wings popped up. And I think it makes a really nice little card. So as I said before, I think I have got carried away with the uh, kit. There's so, so much more I could even have done with that. But don't forget, hold on to the very end and you'll see lots and lots of photographs. But here we are, and there they are, and that's me finished, because I have actually some really, really beautiful things on my desk that I need to get on with. And um, I know once I start those as well, that I'll get just as engrossed in those as I've done with that, because this stuff is far too lovely, and I'm really, really enjoying it. But thank you very, very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that, and hit the notification bell. Give the video a big thumbs up, and leave me a little comment if you've got time. And also my affiliate links to everything I've used will be down below in the description of the video. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye bye.